Hey there, it's John from ProCrafts, and it looks like I've been called out in the Pass the Rack Challenge. So Jeff from Mid-Atlantic Crafts has passed me the rack, and what that means, if you don't know, is uh, Chris at, side, at the Shide Show Gamble Channel has created a challenge where he started out with a small bankroll of 500 bucks, won 50% of it, and then passed that whole rack onto somebody else and challenged them to also win 50% of that bankroll and then move the challenge along. And it's been kind of flowing through uh, a few YouTube channels here over the last week or so. By the way, it's May 12th, 2022. And if you wanna see those previous challenges, I'll give you links here in the description to the, to the guys that went before me leading up to today's challenge. And then of course, at the end of our video, I'll give you a, a hard link to the guy that I pass it to should I um, beat the challenge. So um, with all that said, what's gonna happen? Let's take a look actually at the, at the history here. So here's what's happened so far. So Chris at Sideshow, start with 500 bucks and got the thing up to uh, to 800. He gave that to Chris over at Dice DGen, the Dice DGen channel. He got it to 1171, a 68% win, which is amazing, and then gave it, passed it over to Chiro over at Midmo Yo Craps channel. Um, Chiro got it to 2051, passed it on to Mike at On Point Craps. Mike ran um, the outside four and 10 ladder, which was kind of fun to watch. 66% profit there, gets it to $3,000 and change, gave it to Jeff at Mid-Atlantic Craps. Jeff had a monster, monster roll. You've got to watch that video. It's great. 65% profit, and he's now challenged me with a bankroll of 4,800 bucks. Clearly, I've got to win $2,400 today. So that's my challenge. It comes to me now to win 2,400 bucks in the next few minutes. So what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to go back to my table, get things set up. And by the way, here is the chip stack. I've got the chips rack right here. And now I've got to decide what I'm going to play. And I've been thinking about this all day, you know, and I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of vacillating here a little bit between doing the permanent press, which I know works. It's a good big bankroll strategy. Um, start with 440 on the inside and we'll press 110, 110, 110, 220, 220, 330. Build that thing up and then pull it all back down once we're at goal. It's a strategy designed to get to a goal, but I've never done it with a 50% goal. I usually run that strategy with a five or 10% goal. So I don't know I've, how much I trust it to go 50% bankroll. That's a lot. Um, so I've been thinking about it a lot today. The other thing is, is I, I really like the power hedge where I go back wall and I basically come out of the don't come with a bunch of lay bet odds um, and kind of travel that through along with a couple of hedge bets in, in between there. That's a great strategy to play with black chips. And we're here at the $4,000 bankroll level. We're gonna have a lot of black chips. That makes sense to do, and I think it's kind of fun to attack the dark side. These strategies are always, you know, light side, huge bets, how much can we press? I wonder if we can do it from the dark side. I've been kind of going back and forth all day, but um, still a game time decision. I'm, I'm, I'm like 30 seconds away from walking to my table and making a decision probably on the way as I shuffle back there to see what we're gonna do today. So um, with that said, let me go ahead and switch the camera view. We're gonna go back to the, uh, to the table here. I'll bring the rack with me, we'll get things set up and we'll start rolling this thing out. So uh, just give me a minute to go ahead and switch positions here. All right, let me walk over here and get the, get the rack in place. I'll put it here in the middle and let me show you what's in there first. So in the rack, um, what we have is 4,800 bucks, 4,805, the five bucks we'll just put over here. Matt, he'll be our good luck charm. We'll just put the, the red chip up for, for good luck. We're not gonna play him. And what I've got over here is 2,500 in purple chips. There's four purple chips, four purple chips, and one purple chip. That's 4,500 bucks, and then three blacks. That's gonna be how we manage our rack. We're looking for four, four, one, and three on the chip count in the rack. That'll keep us straight. Now, I got a full confession to make. As I walked over here, I thought to myself, why in the hell are you gonna do the permanent inside press? Or the, or the power hedge? What's the, I mean, those are great strategies, right? The, the permanent press would work. It, it's a, you know, you're pressing 110. The problem I have with that strategy is the bankroll might not be enough to withstand a couple of losses. You need really 10 or 15,000 to do that one. The, the power hedge, same thing, needs about 25 units to really work well. But my God, I'm, I'm known for the horsemen, right? Greg and Skill and Luck and I worked on that thing really, really hard, right? And um, it's kind of my thing. I don't know why I didn't think of why, why am I not playing the horseman? I have to play the horseman. So let's, let's make our goal with the horseman, of course, right? That's what we're going to do. So um, now I'm questioning, though, the, the bet levels. 
I'm looking at my rack and I'm going, this feels like a short stack, right? If I'm looking at this as $5 chips instead of $500 chips, it's, it's kind of a short stack. If I was playing this with $5 chips, I would literally go out there with one there and three here, right? And in this case, you just gotta win five of them. <laughs> you win five of these chips and you could win, obviously, two chips on an early seven. You can, you can, you can do this quickly-ish if the rolls come your way at that level. But it does put half of your bankroll out there and you can only do it twice. You have two shooters worth of doing that. So it's dangerous play to do that. However, the horseman does excel in short rolls. If we get the right set of rolls, it's gonna work out great. The other option I really have is this. I'll, I'll take this one here out. What if we did this and take the, the purple and we got five black chips for it and we did like two units on the don't and three combats. And now you're looking at on a seven, winning 300 bucks, winning 200 bucks, or winning 100 bucks as you come out, and then you've got maybe three combats, and I've got ammunition in here to really load up on odds up in here. So it's really kind of like, do I wanna go flat bet and pray, or I wanna go like play the game a little bit and let these things come out here and drop odds where they need to, where they need to go and play it that way? I think what I wanna do Talking myself into this here. I think what I want to do is this play first. Do I or do I want to go flats? Let's think about this. Let's go flat betting first. Let's go with, with four flats first. If we do well, then great, we're done. That's awesome. If we don't do so well, then I'm going to come back here with these with these reds or with these, with these blacks and we'll do it the shorter way. So let's do it like that. We've got our four. I'll keep this thing set right. Our four purples are ready to play. I have one purple here, and four, so our four purples from the middle stack are gone. Let's do it like that. Let's play the flats, four flats, see what happens. I'm gonna run the hard way set, by the way. Um, it'll be, I run it four, two, four, two, like that, and I stack them, and I spin them. This set does produce um, a lot of hard ways for me. If I get set up in the box, I'll change my set to a set that I know I can roll some inside numbers with. Let's see what happens. Let's just get it rolling here, and here we are. Coming out, first shot, here we are. Not a great roll, um, but it goes to the, to the four. It's a two, two, hard four. That's our first number. It's actually pretty solid, right? I don't, I don't hate having a four when I'm down here with a big don't pass bet. That's pretty cool. Let's get our, uh, our come bets coming. And once these come bets get set, we'll make odds decisions, probably not taking too many odds because again, we're on these giant flat bets and we'll let that sort of play out. So here we go. Let's come through. There's a six, three, nine, six and a three. And that come bet moves to nine. Our next come bet is on the way out. And here we go, coming out. There's a five, four, nine, that's excellent. A five and a four is a nine. That's good because that's an off and on. This will come down and get paid. This one moves in, come back, stays active, bring back a little bit of profit. That's very helpful, like that. It would've been nicer if we had odds on it, but again, at this bankroll level, we don't have enough in our rack to make meaningful odds bets. We'll just let these flats pay. And again, the come bets, just like a pass line bet, is still, even the flat bet, is still the lowest house edge in the house. There's a, a 617. So what happens here is this. Let's log that in. Six and a one. We will lose the nine, okay? But we're gonna get paid in the come, and we're gonna get paid on the don't. So how that plays out in the rack, is gonna be this. There's gonna be four purples. If I put those four purples back, our rack is now back to starting point. If I bring this back, we have a thousand in profit. So, so far, so good. We're trucking along. Let's take and stack up that win. We're gonna take the win, we're gonna pound the don't with that win. Okay, I'm wearing a big AZ shirt today. We're gonna to pound the don't 
take that win and double that bad boy up, I will still do three more combats coming after it. We're still working the bankroll here, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and be aggressive with that don't pass win, and hopefully we can turn that into something positive. And let's get rolling here. Coming out. Three, two, five. There's a three, two, five. Not a bad place to be on the don't. And again, I like the fact that we have a, a nice big don't down here. This is, that feels pretty good um, against that, especially throwing a hard way set that was kind of a outside the box throw there. Here we go. Let's get it right here. Aces, that's a bummer. That's gonna steal a purple chip from us. I hate that. Here we go. Another come bet on the way. Let me log the aces into the roll tracker. All right. That's a hard eight, four, four, hard eight. Well, that's against the wall. Sorry, I gotta pull it out with my hands. It's a hard eight. It's gonna roll up into here. Next combat's gonna come out. Okay, and here we go. Dice are out. Ooh, another one. Are you kidding me? That's a one, two, three aces, or one, two, three uh, craps. Takes our second, we lost a thousand bucks in the come just on that. We gotta stick this out. So we have a choice here, right? I got the seven against the five, which I really like. I've got the eight all by its loans. So I've had two come bets taken from me. I'm gonna get those bad boys right back. We're gonna go jump on the odds here on the eight and just get an attack on that and see what happens. Let's log that three in there, two and a one. Let's knock this eight off and uh, get after it. Here we go. Dice are out. There's a six. It's not an eight, it's a six. Come on. Five and a one. Okay, dice are out. Six, three, nine. No harm, no foul, no help. Here we go. Six, two, eight. Beautiful. Just what we needed. It, it gets us back to even. We lost a thousand bucks. So what's going to happen? We're going to win basically 500 on the flat bet, and a thousand is going to win 1200 on the back side of that. So it's helpful. It's not the money that we were hoping for coming out of that. It would have been great um, to have banged that out <laughs> earlier, but here we go without the losses to come. But we can still get ourselves set back up, right? There's our, there's our rack. Back to health. There's 500, there's 200, there's 700 hours in the rack. That is profit, and we're looking good there. We have $1,000 out on the, on, the, on the felt, right? We have 700 here and 1,000 here, right? We need to bang that seven out, and we'll be okay. We bang out a seven, we're gonna be at goal, and the horseman will have done its job. We just gotta beat that five. All right, here we go, coming out. Did I log the eight? for us? I did. Okay, let's go. Here we go. There's a 5-3 repeater on the 8. Doesn't matter, we're not there. We're just playing for big red right now. Okay, here we go. Five, two, seven. Big red shows its ugly head, but to us, it's a beautiful thing because there's a thousand dollars coming in. Okay, and how does our rack look right now? We're in okay shape. We're not quite there, right? Actually, we are there. I'm lying to you. We have in our main bankroll, we're clean. In our profit side, we've got one thousand, two thousand, five hundred, two thousand, seven hundred and five. So we've hit goal. 
We had a grind for a minute there. I think playing it at the purple flat level was the right move. I think taking the aggressive move on the eight when we did, I, it was kind of an anger move. I was pissed off about losing those two combats, but it's still the right, the right call, right? That's still a great, when the combat gets into a position where you're really gonna have a good chance of scoring, take the chance. And I treated this like a short stack. I treated this not like 5,000 bucks. I treated it like nine red chips or nine purple chips. And how best can we use nine chips? I did the best that I could. And quite frankly, I'll take a $2,700 win every day of the week. So there it is, 2,700 bucks win. We'll take that, we'll send that off to the next person. Um, I've got a little plan here for how I'm gonna choose the next person. So let me go back to the computer and we'll get that screen set up for you and um, I'll wave to you here in a second and we'll get our next shooter selected. All right, well, we did it, we did it. Um, the Horseman, you know, that's a pretty typical Horseman run. Like it wins really quick. It, you get the right set of rolls, you're in and you're out. I, I win like that with it all the time. When I say I hit my 20% and I'm out, that happens to me more often than I'd probably care to admit where I'm, I just get it fast. If you don't get it quick, sometimes that thing can become a really serious grind. You've seen me grind the horseman out before. Today was not one of those days. Luckily, a lot of pressure here to get that thing done. We got it done. Now the big thing, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and decide who do I pass the rack to? That's the big question. Well, I think the easiest way to do it is this. I've got a lot of a lot of good friends, a lot of a lot of YouTubers that I know and love, and some of us talk a lot, some of us don't talk a lot. And I, how do I pick the right person for this thing? Well, what I'm gonna do is what I always do, which is let the dice pick for me. Um, so here, I what I've done is I made a grid with all of the numbers, right? All the combinations of dice. And I'm just gonna treat y'all like combats. I'm just gonna literally let the dice decide for me who's gonna go. I'm gonna come on back over here and drop the dice out. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shoot for here, right? So you can see the dice land and it's gonna be a fair shot. But um, plan is just roll the dice out here and um, let me just see where they land and that's who it's gonna be. And you know, if it's somebody that we know and love and talk to all the time, great. If it's somebody that I haven't talked to in a while, even better. Um, I'd love to grab somebody um, on the phone here and, um, and reintroduce um, and, and get them going. So I'm just gonna go ahead and randomly roll them. Three, two, one, we'll count it down. And um, if you're on the list there, you can uh, say your prayers. If, if not, place your bets and here we go. Three, two, one, dice are out. All right, what do we have? We have a 639, a 639. That is Ed Robinson from Roll to Win. Beautiful, I picked, um, actually I signed Ed the nine because I know that the nine is one of Ed's signature numbers. Happens to be one of mine apparently tonight as well. So um, there it is, Ed Robinson, you've got the torch. I'm passing it to you, giving you the rack. Let's see if you can, can uh, follow suit here, execute. You got a pretty sizable bankroll here. Um, We've got 7,400 bucks for you. So Ed, um, ball's in your court, the dice are in your hands. Let's get this thing done. And i um, looking forward to seeing what you do with it. Let me get back over here and talk to y'all some more. So um, great challenge, uh, Chris Sideshow. What a cool idea this is. I I'm, I'm love this idea of passing it around. Um, in fact, I told you before, I'm gonna steal this for the next Crapsathon. We're gonna do this next Crapsathon with this same challenge live passing the rack every hour for 24 hours as part of each guest segment. They're gonna to have to roll the dice and, and help us move this thing along and see if we can't get some donations for the Crapsathon, um, which is Crapping on Cancer. It's all about uh, Steve, pressed by one, um, getting, uh, getting some awareness done for cancer. He, as you know, is suffering from stage four uh, throat cancer. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing done um, for him. Again, love the idea. This is a lot of fun. Thanks for, for challenging me, Jeff, and uh, best of luck to you, Ed. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again. Um, I'm John. This is Procrafts. As always, uh, leave us a note in the comments. Appreciate uh, your subscriptions, liking the videos. And uh, with that said, God bless. I'll see you next time.